This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, having looked at how to equity account uh, for an associate within the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, we're now going to move on to the only real adjustment that you see on top of that, which is adjusting for provisions for unrealized profit when there is trading between the group and the associates. Now, the key thing to remember is that the idea is still exactly the same as what you saw previously when there was a pup adjustment between the parent and the sub or the sub and the parent. And what you need to do there is you need to remove any profit that there has been made on goods that have been sold, whereby the goods are still in inventory at the end of the year. However, the big difference that we have here is that when we work out the PUP based upon the markup or the margin and the amount of inventory held at the end of the year, we need to go through there and make sure that we adjust for the group share only. So if we own 40% of an associate, we'll adjust for 40% of that provision for unrealized profits. As well as looking at the percentage ownership, we also need to take consideration of the direction of the sale to then go through and look at how the debits and the credits work. So let's go through that. Uh, there's two scenarios to look at, isn't there? Uh, the first one is the whereby parent sells to the associate. So P goes through and sells to A. And then the second scenario is whereby the associate goes through and sells to the parent, isn't it? Now, the key bit that you've got there is we need to think about who has the profit on the sale and who has the inventory. So if we go through that and look at the first situation, then it is the parent that has made the profit, isn't it? And it is the associate has the inventory in its books at the end of the year isn't it so what we need to go through and do is we need to remove that profit from the parents books and we need to credit the inventory of the associate but there's an issue uh, when you look at the associate we haven't consolidated that associate have we so we cannot credit inventory like what we've been used to doing so we have to credit something uh, we have to credit something to do with the associate and the only place that we can credit the associate within our account is that investment in the associates so what we're going to do there is that if p sells to a we will credit the investment in associate we won't credit inventory because the group doesn't hold the inventory within its inventory line does it okay we're crediting something to do with the associate so the investment in the associate and the parent has the profits so the, the group retained earnings are what we would debit if we needed to be specific within the statement of profit or loss, uh, we have consolidated the parent's cost of sales, so we will debit the cost of sales of the parent. Okay. In a similar fashion, if we go through and look at the, if A sells the goods to P, then A has the profit. And P has the inventory, doesn't it? So if that's the case, we're looking to credit the year end inventory. And here we can credit the inventory on the inventory line within the group accounts because P owns the inventory and P's inventory would have been consolidated within the group accounts. So we credit the inventory and here, just be careful in the group SFP. Remember, it's the group that has the influence over the sale. So therefore, we will debit the group retained earnings. So as you can see, it makes no difference in terms of the direction of the sale on the SFP. We always debit the group retained earnings. Okay. However, when you're going through and looking at what happens in the statement of profit or loss, you can see a difference. If the associate has made the profit, we can be a little bit more specific, can't we? about where that profit figure is impacted. If the associate has the profit, we are going to debit the associate's profit within our share of profit of associate.
So there's a couple of distinctions that we need to make, isn't there? Uh, let's just have a recap before in the next video, you go through there and start to look at an example. So what you've got there, P sells to A, P has the profit, A has the inventory. Uh, we want to process a credit. We can't credit the inventory because A owns the inventory and that inventory is not within the group accounts. So we have to credit something, something to do with the associates. So therefore we will credit the investment in associates. The other side of the entry is a debit entry. In the group statement of financial position, we will debit the group retained earnings as it is always the group that has the influence. But when we're being specific in the statement of profit or loss, we will debit the cost of sales as the parent has the profit and we will remove that pup from the parent's profits. Okay. Uh, then in the second bit, uh, A sold to P, wasn't it? So P has the inventory, so we can credit the inventory on that inventory line within the group accounts. The debit in the SFP always goes to group retained earnings as it is the group that has the influence. And then just be careful as the associate has made the profit, we're going to remove that pop adjustment from the share of profit of associates. It might be worthwhile committing those journal entries to, to, to knowledge, remembering them, that you can then apply them in the exam. And when you then calculate the pop adjustment based upon the goods in inventory at the end of the year, the mark or the margin, don't forget to take the group share. Okay, uh, there you go. Let's see how we get on with the example. Let's go through and have a look at the example on associate pups. Uh, very similar to an exam standard question, it looks like. Uh, multiple choice for A, B, C or D. And it wants us to go through there and look at accounting adjustment. Uh, the LR would process in the preparation of its consolidated accounts. So that would, to me, look as if LR was the parent. And if you read the background information, we're told that LR, the parent, owns 40% of is it gh okay uh it goes on to say there during the year to december x3 lr purchased the goods so lr is the parent uh, purchased five hundred thousand dollars from gh is that the the associate so here it looks like we have a sale from the associate to the parent don't we um, what we have there is that the associate and the link to the parent is 40%. So whenever we calculate the put based upon the markup, the sales value, which we know is 500,000. And is it there then any goods that are still left in inventory? Don't forget to take the 40% of that final figure. So what we know is that the goods were 500,000. Of those that were in inventory, there were a quarter. It goes on to say we have a markup of 25% on our sales. And then that important bit there is we need to take 40%, don't we? So what we've got there is we are going to take one quarter of 500,000. The markup is 25 percent so we'll take 25 125 and don't forget that we need to take 40 percent don't we tapping that into your calculator bish bash bosh uh, should i think go through that and give you ten thousand and we have the associate selling the goods to the parent, isn't it? So if that's the case, the associate has made the profit and the parent has the inventory, isn't it? So if that's the case, if the parent has the inventory, we can take that credit adjustment to inventory. And then what we also have as well is that the associate has the profit so we can go through there, can't we, and debit the group retained earnings, or more specifically in profit or loss, the share of profit of associates. So we need to credit inventory, debit share of profit of associate with 10,000. We've worked it out, we then look at the answers. Is there an entry, as we so said, 
I think the answer is yes. It's there, isn't it? Is answer C or D? There we go. It won't get any more difficult than that. I think the questions will be pretty similar uh, within the uh, exam. Okay, so work it through again. Uh, practice the questions in whichever revision kit you may have in your possession. And if you've got any questions, you know where they are. Good luck and keep up the hard work.